It's Saturday, March 1st, 2025. James Briarton in Charlotte with Scotty Powell in Myrtle Beach. We're coming on the air because we have critical fire weather danger across the Carolinas with active wildfires burning in both states from the coast to the mountains. Uh, one of the biggest ones is right where Scotty Powell is near Myrtle Beach. So, Scotty, what is the latest down there in Horry County? Yes. Yeah, so uh, around 1.30, 2 o'clock today, uh, we started... Well, let's rewind to back to yesterday. We were placed under that fire weather watch, and um, those are very, um, very rare for uh, the Carolinas to see fire weather watches. And then overnight was upgraded to a fire weather warning, and you can see even critical fire um, weather uh, for Western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina. So uh, we kind of knew like coming into this event, there's the potential to see some wildfires out there and I'll try to get it framed up here. There we go. Uh, oh, as uh, some wildfires across the area and it's been so dry. Like we've been talking about the drought for, for yeah. months. It seems like just not being able to climb out of it. And then we had low humidity values today as well as some gusty winds around 25, 35 miles per hour. And that's just kind of all the ingredients we needed today so all you really needed is a quote-unquote spark and we don't know how it happened but there was a spark in the carolina forest area uh this afternoon and uh you could just ult uh, quickly see the smoke just blossom into the air as you can see with these pictures here uh that continued throughout the afternoon into the evening hours uh so the carolina forest area if you've ever been to Myrtle Beach, it is the uh, area right before you kind of uh, cross over the intracoastal waterway until you get on into downtown proper Myrtle Beach. So uh, Carolina Forest is a very fast growing develop, uh, community. It's not really a town, but community. And uh, there is a lot, lot, lot of subdivisions, apartment complexes, uh, homes and of that nature. So it's a very populated area. So when this happened, we we obviously knew that it, it could be something serious. So uh, the fire continues. Thankfully, as of right now, it's 9.23. We haven't heard of any structures um, being destroyed. Uh, no injuries. So that is some good news. But I've seen videos and pictures of the fire literally on the back porch of some areas. But uh, our great first responders and fire and rescue folks have really been able to protect the property out there so we give kudos to them yeah Look yeah that's that some trees right there and that is a carolina forest boulevard the road which is a four yeah, four lane road kind of connects you from a 501 to uh highway 31 so uh, and you can see the structure prote structure protection there from the fire uh, truck there just kind of waiting to see how far that fire advances um, and I'm getting ready to upload some pictures here in just a second of the wildfire down in Georgetown County in the Polly's yeah. Island area. but uh, what you were just saying that last photo there that was uh, one of the communities um, that was being evacuated earlier this afternoon and and people our reporter was out there uh, talking about people are just kind of walking out of their homes to the Carolina Forest Rec Center where's where everyone kind of gathered yeah. at. So let's get that information here. Here it yeah. is. Carolina Forest Recreation Center is where the evacuation area is. If you're a local, you probably know it. It's at 2254 Carolina Forest Boulevard in Myrtle Beach because uh, they did evacuate Walker's Woods and Avalon neighborhoods of the Carolina Forest Division. Uh, we did have the good news that some folks living along Tuxahoe, Tuxahoe Road, and yes. Wynadot, Wynadot Court have been allowed to return home, but only those folks. So if you live elsewhere in those uh, areas we mentioned, uh, Walkerswood and Avalon neighbors, uh, you are still asked to evacuate to friends, family, or if you have no place else to go, the Carolina Forest Recreation Center. So, I mean, we have, Scotty, uh, numerous uh, fires burning across the Carolinas. These are the satellite-detected wildfires in just North Carolina and South Carolina in the last two and a half hours alone. And if I scroll this list down, which I can't do at the moment, that's okay. Uh, I'll show you this map. If I zoom out for Myrtle Beach, you were just starting to mention, Scotty, uh, the fire you guys have is not the only one. Every one of these red dots constitutes some sort of fire burning in the last 24 hours. And this is why fire officials have been pleading with folks, please, please, please don't have fires. Don't burn leaves. Don't have 
campfires. I mean, we had 20 mile per hour gusts here in Charlotte, and it would be very easy for a spark or an ember unintentionally to blow into any of these dry vegetation conditions we have, Scotty. And what we were hearing a lot of was spot fires. And if you're not familiar uh, or if you've not watched our program or listened to it, uh, we've talked about spot fires before. It's it's these embers that kind of get caught up in the wind and they could be blown, you know, anywhere from a couple hundred feet to half a mile or so away from the main fire. And then with the dry vegetation, it, it just sparks a new fire. So we were hearing about that. In fact, there's some videos and, and pictures out there of like people's yards that have like burn spots in them from, from those spot you know fires. What? Basically. We did have one of those today. Let me take my screen share down while I get it just in Pineville, right? Like not big enough to like probably make the news, not big enough to afford evacuations. But I wanted to emphasize the point you were making, Scotty, which is this is a picture from Pineville, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte today. And it just totally burnt all the grass outside the sun. Yeah. And, and remember, we're still in the winter season. So the grass is dormant. It's not really holding mm -hmm. um, oh, moisture. the moisture and stuff like that. So it doesn't take a lot. And obviously it's been very dry. So any foliage or sticks or anything like that, that's kind of just laying in the forest, it, it dries out. And so it doesn't take a lot for these fires to get going. And unfortunately here in the Myrtle beach area, uh, there are so many fires back into the PD in Georgetown County, the upstate, which we'll talk about here in just a second, that aerial support wasn't able to get here to do those water drops. So if I just posted it on my Facebook page. So James, if you want to go over there, there was sure. some aerial drops in Georgetown County. And uh, there's some pictures up there, thanks to uh, Georgetown County uh, for sharing those out. And you can see these airplanes actually uh, dropping water on these fires. And there was just so many that that they could not keep up with as many fires in the state today. I can't remember the exact number, but it was over 100 fires just in South Carolina today. So um, just a, a, a very bad day for fire weather. And, uh, you know, this is something, James, that we see in Oklahoma and Kansas and um, I was just thinking that yeah it's, it's something that you see out out in the Midwest and and the California fires are very dramatic and, and but it's a different setup out there you have the Santa Ana winds and things like that but for here uh this is just very uncommon in fact uh, I think we've done a show about this before, but the last major fire here in the South Carolina or Myrtle Beach area was that 2008 wildfire that um, kind of uh, uh, jumped over Highway 31 and, and burned some properties near Grand Dunes on the Intracoastal Waterway. So it's been a, a long time since we've seen a major wildfire like this in the Grand Strand, and, and today was just unfortunately one of those days. And the bad news is, is you all have experienced the cold front up there in Charlotte. Yeah. The cold front hasn't got here yet, so we're still going to see those gusty winds, winds. over the next uh, few hours. And once that wind switches out of the south to the north, it's going to kind of blow that smoke back into Carolina Forest, back into Myrtle Beach, and hopefully – it won't blow the flames that way, but uh, it's it's been a very large fire. So it's it's taken a lot of time to get containment lines built around this fire to kind of keep it isolated to where it's at right now. So uh, definitely not out of the woods yet with this situation. Uh, I know uh, one of our major roadways, International Drive, is totally shut down for these fire officials. And it goes through a, a reserve area that's very wooded still, uh, and that's kind of where the fire is at. So they're really trying to get a good containment around this fire. So uh, how do you put out a fire? Will you set a new fire? Fire and fire combined, it runs out of the moist, the fuel that it needs on the ground to continue to spread. So you fight fire with fire, and, and that's what they're trying to do this evening uh, to kind of get a, a handle on this fire. We've had a lot of controlled burns here in the Charlotte area, a lot of plantation near Huntersville over the course of the last few days trying to get ahead of exactly what you're describing, right? Like if we use fire to clear off all the fuel in a controlled fashion, maybe we can head off uh, some of the fires uh, like we're seeing tonight. Uh, Evan Fisher, a friend of ours up in Asheville who, who posted earlier, you know, talking about the fire danger, I thought he was also so spot on about a key danger in Western North Carolina, uh, Scotty, which is that all the Helene debris that still lies yeah. in the forest is just primed fuel and we've already seen that a little bit with the fires we've seen in the recent weeks in mcdowell county it's just sitting there and it's unfortunately ready to go 
Unfortunately, you know, you need kindlin to start a fire. That kindlin is relaying it in the forest right now from those down trees um, in, in the mountains and, and foothills of western North Carolina, the upstate of South Carolina. So it's just been a very, um, very dangerous day out there. And just, you know, I, I, I believe I've said this before on, on our show, but the biggest weather phenomenon that scares me is wildfire because it can just be so chaotic and so extreme at times that there's not much you can do to prepare for it. It's not like you can say, hey, you know, we see this tornado or hurricane off in the distance. These things just pop up and, and we've seen video after video from Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg to out in California into Colorado that these things just kind of take a, a mind of their own yeah. and they spread so quickly. They're tied so closely to weather, but unlike a hurricane or a severe weather outbreak, we can't necessarily see them days in advance other right. than to forewarn you uh, about certain weather conditions that would make fires prime, which is exactly what the SPC, the Storm Prediction Center arm of NOAA and the National Weather Service, uh, was trying to do today when they issued the critical outlook that you can see and the elevated outlook for parts of North Carolina and South Carolina, because if I read the language to you, you can you know, we get a little nerdy here, but a very dry air mass has settled across the region in the wake of a cold dry front with current so surface observations indicating dew points, how much moisture is in the air between 25 and 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, highs near 70 degrees Fahrenheit today will support several hours of critical minimum relative uh, humidity values near just 20 or 30 percent. You've probably seen it with the sparks and the static electricity and how dry your lips are. Um, and that will help fuel along with those breezy conditions at this time, the best Best overlap of surface winds, sustained winds near 20 miles an hour and wind gusts between 20 and 30 combined with critical fuels appear to be across portions of Western North Carolina and South Carolina with a critical fire danger has been introduced. But, you know, we've got the critical, but we've got the elevated and we can see that has really verified everywhere when we look at all of these dots, big and small across the region here in the past 24 hours alone. Yes, and I'm um, just looking here. This is from South Carolina Forestry Service. It looks like, and I, I I didn't say this beforehand, but there's actually two fires in the Carolina Forest area. I forgot to mention that there's one uh, closer to Carolina Forest and one in the reserve. And it looks like the acreage on both of these fires combined right now is 700 acres with no wow. containment so um that is um that's a large fire so we'll continue and i will say this uh south carolina forestry service has issued a burn ban for the entire state of south carolina do not burn uh, period. yeah um uh, indefinitely until until conditions get better so uh that uh, is also ongoing today so yeah the two fires here in Horry county just seeing the latest here uh, at least 700 acres combined with the two fires and zero percent containment seeing it in our live chat and you may be smelling it depending where you are when we combine the fire map with the air quality you can see some of those areas have already dropped into reduced air quality of, co of course uh where where scotty is in, in myrtle beach we're getting those particulates we're up to a moderate so usually sensitive people consider reducing unusually sensitive people consider reducing outdoor activity go inside close the windows uh, make sure you've got some sort of air filtration but you know this stretches across so so much of the Carolinas, we can see it near Wilmington because of fires. We can see it near Fayetteville because of fires. We can see it uh, near Florence because of fires. Charleston, Savannah, Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, even a few sensors in Columbia. And again, up in Greenville, Spartanburg, because we've got a fire burning here just across North Carolina line in Tryon. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is another area. I've, I've seen a picture earlier today of that Tryon area. And uh, that looks to be the potential to see a pretty large fire as well so uh, we'll have to watch that and uh, I was just looking here at the forestry service and uh, it has uh, those levels today pretty high for uh, for the fire sir fire danger so it's you know it's not looking good out there and I was trying to see if I could find um, the map here and I was going to turn turn the camera over to my uh, my phone here so i'll see if i can continue finding that while we talk you're not but, you don't have yeah. to be looking for this i got queued up for you because i know you had this today 
on yes. the air. Yeah, yeah, we had that on the together. air. Yep, that was on the air. I think I found this map right. Yeah, I found it right here. So I want to scroll this over, and I'm just going to kind of show you okay. the state of South Carolina here. All right. Uh, this this is the uh, forestry service. So hopefully we can get. Is this it a link you can just drop me? We're I live, can. folks. In case that wasn't yeah. evident. Yeah, we can. I can drop it to you. So um, okay. we'll have it here. While you do that, I'll explain. So what. Scotty was showing to his viewers today on WBTW, and I'm sure he'll show again here in the late news, is how the particulates from the fire in the smoke show up on radar. It looks like rain, but that narrow band shows from the source of the fire on the left-hand side, and then you can actually see how the wind was carrying it off to the east. And then, Scotty, you said once that cold front comes on through, we expect that wind direction to change. Yeah, that wind direction is going to change. And so that smoke that you see drifting from literally west to east will kind of come from where that RNG red spot is due south into the heart of Myrtle Beach. So uh, we'll see those conditions go downhill uh, once that wind switches over. So James, if you'll check our Slack there, I think uh, sure. got it there. So we'll be able to see, it kind of gives you a broad picture of the South Carolina fires. And then uh, you can kind of go in and see the two fires here that currently in Horry County. Again, one and 400 acres and the other 300 acres. So this is exactly the map I was trying to find before. I will be yeah. adding this. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I'm going to see if I can find some numbers on that Georgetown fire that we just showed earlier. So let's see if that's popping up. And I'll widen yet. this back out, folks, because I know we got. So here's uh, South Carolina. Active incidents are in red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are active. And then everything that is tan is contained. Are they all contained at 100%? Yeah, but remember, contained doesn't mean out. It just means that they've boxed it in so that it is contained to wherever it is currently burning so it doesn't spread controlled which in this case looks like it's an even darker kind of grayish black that means it's 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 out and it's done but yes. con contained just means it's still burning but it's it's trapped hopefully yeah and that's what we want we uh, yeah. we want it to be trapped and when the uh wind dies down then you don't really have to worry about that jump in containment line so uh, and that's the concern, you know, with the containment even tonight, even though it's at zero percent, once this starts to get contained, you don't want it to jump over those lines because now it's got fresh fuel, per se, to burn again. So. Here's the North Carolina map, not to be left out. Again, you can see red here means active and burning. Our try on fire, zero containment, 400 mm -hmm. acres. Uh, some of these, you know, are relatively smaller, but two acres is still going to pull out resources uh that's going to be um firefighters who have to go out and, and try to battle these flames that are that are happening across uh north carolina and south carolina tonight so remember uh fire weather danger is going to be uh high and critical over the next rest of the weekend and air quality so scotty i think we'll leave it there as you get ready for your 10 o'clock show yeah yeah that's it uh stay tuned on our social media i've been tagging a uh, carolina weather group on the x account and i know james has been reposting those so you can keep up what's going on here and again just like we've been telling people do not burn don't burn don't burn don't burn uh we're gonna get some rain on wednesday which will bring us back here maybe with the chance of thunderstorms but until then at least until that front moves through don't burn anything we need to see some good rainfall around here Yep. And if you want to learn more about how wind influences fire spread, our 500th episode of the Carolina Weather Group right here in the South Carolinas at the Ins Insurance Institute for Home and Business Safety. And you can see this was a controlled experiment, but wind driven fire can spread very quickly. You can find that already over on our YouTube channel. Scotty, stay safe out there and we'll talk to everybody again real soon. Yep. Sounds good.